ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله ان دي ذا موست فول سبيتش از ذا بوك اوف الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ذا بيست جايدنس وي هاف از ذا جايدنس اوف اور بلاد ميسنجر محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها ان ذا ورست اوف افيرز ار ذوز ثينجز وي نيد انفنت ان تو ذس ريليجن اوف اورز وكل محدثه بدعه ان ايفري ثينج وي نيد انفنت ان تو ذس ريليجن اوف اورز از ان انوفيشن وكل بدعه ضلاله ايفري انوفيشن از ميس جايدنس ان ليد ستري وكل ضلاله في النار and every going astray every misguidance is in the hell fire thumma ma ba'd my dear brothers and sisters in islam if allah allows us to live another 31 or so days we will enter the blessed month of ramadan and this is a month that the sahaba for five months leading up to ramadan would be preparing for and here we are in a home stretch rounding third base trying to get to that home that home of Ramadan but we got some work to do and so over the next few weeks let us remind ourselves of some things that we need to work on from now so when Ramadan comes these things are not a question you're already up and going we're going to remind ourselves today of the hadith of Hanzala and Hanzala al-Usayyidi qala wa kana min كتاب رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال لقيني ابو بكر فقال كيف انت يا حنظل قال قلت نافق حنظل قال سبحان الله ما تقول قال قلت نكون عند رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يذكرنا بالنار وبالجنه حتى كان راي عين فاذا خرجنا من عند رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم عافسنا الازواج والاولاد وال والضيعات فنسينا كثيرا قال ابو بكر رضي الله عنه فوالله ان لنلقى مثل هذا حمد الله سيدي هو one of the scribes of the messenger of scribes of the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم he said i met abu bakr one day and he said how are you oh حمد الله and he said Hamdullah has become a hypocrite. So Abu Bakr radiyallahu anhu he said to him glorify be Allah. How perfect is Allah? What are you saying? Thereupon he said I say that when we're in the company of Allah's messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam we're remembering jahannam we're remembering the fire we're remembering jannah we're remembering paradise as if we see them with our own eyes as if they actually exist they do actually exist but as if I can see them visually. It's tangible. Now I know it exists. This is how they are in the presence of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. But when they would turn away from him, they would go back and they would attend to their wives, attend to their children, attend to their business. Most of these per- things that pertain to the afterlife slip out of their minds. So Abu Bakr radiyallahu anhu the best in this ummah after Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he said by Allah, I experienced the same thing. وانطلقت انا وابو بكر حتى دخلنا على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قلت نافق حنظل يا رسول الله فقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وماذاك 
قلت يا رسول الله نكون عندك تذكرنا بالنار والجنة حتى كأن رأي عين فإذا خرجنا من عندك عافسنا الأزواج والأولاد والضيعات نسينا كثيرا so Hamdala he said I and Abu Bakr رضي الله عنه we went to the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم and we said to him oh Allah's messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم Hamdala has become a hypocrite so the Messenger of Allah وسلم, he said, what has happened to you? So Hamdala said, O oh Allah's Messenger, when we're in your company, we remember the hellfire, and we remember Jannah, paradise, as if we see it with our own eyes. But when we're not in your company, we go and we attend to our wives and to our children and to our businesses. And those things, those minds and those thoughts of paradise and, and, and the hellfire, they go away. And those things leave our minds. فَقَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ وَالَّذِي نَفْسِي بِيَدِهِ إِنَّوْ تَدُومُونَ عَلَى مَا تَكُونُونَ عِنْدِي وَفِي الذِّكْرِ لَصَافَحَتْكُمْ الْمَلَائِكَةِ عَلَى فُرُشِكُمْ وَفِي طُرِقِكُمْ وَلَكِنْ يَا حَمْضَ لَهِ سَاعَةً وَسَاعَةً سَاعَةً وَسَاعَةً سَاعَةً وَسَاعَةً The hadith concludes where the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم says by the one in whose hand is my life and my soul. If your state of mind remains the same as it is when you're in my presence, and you're not in my presence, if this was the same state of mind, and you're always busy in the remembrance of Allah, then the angels, they'll shake your hands with you in your beds and in your paths. But alhamdulillah, time, sa'a wa sa'a, literally hour for an hour, he said, Alhamdulillah, sa'a wa sa'a, three times. Time should be devoted to your worldly affairs of this dunya, and time should be devoted to your prayer and ibadah and worshiping Allah. Time for your dunya affairs, time devoted to Allah and to your Islam and to your ibadah. And this hadith is in Zahih Muslim. So, how should we reflect upon this hadith to prepare for Ramadan? What should we reflect upon on what and where we spend our time, our energy, our wealth? Is it for this dunya or is it for the akhirah? Reflect on that time and energy and wealth. What are you doing to prepare for your next life? That eternal life, that permanent life, that forever life. What are you doing with your time and how is it devoted to this dunya? And what are you doing with your time and how is it devoted to Allah and to seeking His pleasure? Is there a balance or is it lopsided? And I think it's very easy for us to say that none of us put in the time for Allah, for our Lord, to earn His pleasure, to earn His mercy and His forgiveness, to earn Jannah. None of us put the time into that nearly equal to what we put into the time of this dunya, to these worldly matters. And Allah didn't ask us to be just like that. Allah didn't ask us to sit in the masjid all day and to not go and work and to not have any good times with family and friends. But there should be a balance of what, of, of which is why we are commanded to ask for good in this life and the next. Because if you're only seeking it in this life, take it. But if you want it in the next life, then you have to seek it while you're in this life. Allah Azza wa Jalla said, "From the nasi man yaqul Rabbana atna fi dunya wa ma lahu fi al-akhirati min khalaq." Allah says, "What means? But of mankind, there are those who say, Our Lord." Give us your bounties in this world, and for such there will be no portion in the hereafter. If you just want in this world, give it, take it. Maybe Allah will give it to you all in this world, but there will be no share in the next life. وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ يَقُولُ رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَةً وَفِي الْآخَرَةِ حَسَنَةً وَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ And of them are those who say, Our Lord, give us in this world what is good, and in the akhirah what is good. And save us from the torment of the fire. These are the ones who are going to be successful. Allah didn't tell you just to ask for good in the akhirah. He told you to ask for good in both lives and to be saved from the hellfire. So what are you doing to work towards that? Allah says, فَإِذَا جَاءَتِ الْقَامَةُ الْقُدْرَةِ And when there comes to them the greatest catastrophe. يوم القيامة The day of recompense, the day of standing, the day of being judged by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. يَوْمَ يَتَذَكَّرُ الْإِنسَانُ مَا سَعَى The day when mankind 
he and she, he or she will be reminded of what they strove for, what they really put their time and energy pursuing in this life, what they really put their wealth into in pursuing this in this life, what they really devoted their years of their life into while they're in this dunya, while they were in this on this earth. And hellfire will be made apparent in full view for everyone who sees. Then for him who taha, who transgressed the limits of Allah, disobeyed Allah and His Messenger وسلم, did evil deeds of disobedience. And he or she sought this life, they preferred this life over the akhirah, following their desires and their lusts. Let me fulfill them because this is the Jannah I'm pursuing right now, this dunya. Verily his abode will be the hellfire. But as for him who fears the standing between the, before his Lord, and he restrained himself much from impure evil desires and lusts, he held back even though the urge was to fulfill them. He feared the day he would meet Allah and be questioned by Allah, so he restrained himself. Verily, paradise will be his abode. So my brothers and sisters in Islam, do not be foolish. Do not prefer the life of this world over the next one. But truly ask Allah for good in both. But to be fair in all honesty, that means balancing them. That means balancing them. Not six hours of sleep, eight hours of work in school, eight hours of entertainment and leisure and social media and the likes of this. And then the scrap is left for Allah. The leftovers. Like what they say gets put into a hot dog. The leftover stuff, that's what we're going to give to Allah. Because this is how, and I advise myself first, we're living our life. Sleep, work, amusement, play. Very little gets left for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if any per day. Without a doubt, you can give time to the dunya matters, especially with what Allah enjoined upon us. And Abi Huraira radiallahu anhu qal, qal Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, اِكْلَفُوا مِنَ الْعَمْلِ مَا تُفِيقُونَ فَإِنَّ خَيْرَ الْأَعْمَالِ أَدْوَمُهُ وَإِنْ قَلْبُ رواه ابن ماجه وهذا حديث صحيح The Prophet ﷺ, he said, take on only as much as you can of good deeds. Take on only as much as you can of good deeds, but the best of the deeds is that which is done consistently, even if it is little. The ones that you do consistently, never belittle a good deed. Never belittle something good you can do. The smallest of actions that take the littlest of energy and wealth and time sometimes can bring you the best reward. Never belittle any good that you can do. And Abdullah ibn Amr ibn Al-As radiallahu anhu qal qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Ya Abdullah, alam ukhbar annaka tasum al-nahar wa taqum al-layl Qultu bala ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qala فَلَا تَفْعَلْ سُمْ وَأَفْطِرْ وَقُمْ وَنَمْ فَإِنَّ لِجَسِدِكَ عَلَيْكَ حَقَّ وَإِنَّ لِعَيْنَكَ عَلَيْكَ حَقَّ وَإِنَّ لِزَوْجِكَ عَلَيْكَ حَقَّ رواه البخاري Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم he said, Oh Abdullah, have I not been have I not been informed that you fast all day and you stand up every night in prayer throughout the whole night عفوا, throughout the whole night in prayer he said, Yes, O Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم he said do not do that. Do not fast every day. Do not stand up the whole night in prayer. Observe the fast sometimes and leave it sometimes. Get up for the night prayer sometimes for a part of the night and sleep a part of the night. Your body has a right over you. Your eyes have a right over you. Your wife has a right over you. And this hadith is in Sahih al-Bukhari. وَقَالْ فِي رَوَايَةٍ وَإِنَّ لِنَفْسِكَ حَقٌ وَلِأَهْلِكَ حَقٌ no doubt, in another narration it says, no doubt your body has a right upon you and your family has a right upon you. So fulfill your rights. Not everything was meant for us to just be ibadah 24-7 and you neglect the rights of your body and your family and your spouses and the likes of these matters. It wasn't intended like that. لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها لها ما كسبت وعليها ما اكتسبت Allah says what it means, Allah burdens not a person beyond his scope. He gets the reward for the good that he or she does and has earned. And he or she is punished for the evil of what he or she has earned. But at the same time, we need to look at the flip side. We, the same time, 
We need to look at the flip side. Those of us who can do and should do and have the energy to do and have the time to do and have the wealth to do, but yet we still restrain ourselves from doing those good deeds. Allah Azza wa Jal, He said, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُغَيِّرُ مَا بِقَوْمٍ حَتَّى يُغَيِّرُ مَا بِأَنفُسِهِمْ Allah Azza wa Jal, He said what means verily, Allah will not change the condition, the good condition of a people till they change their state of goodness themselves. So when people are upon good, Allah will keep them upon that condition as long as they don't turn to committing sins and evil deeds. And the opposite is true. That if you're upon sin and committing evil, disobe- evil and committing disobedience, then for you, for Allah to help change your condition, you have to try to change yourself. You have to try. Your situation won't change till you change what is in yourself. We had a pandemic. And we see war. And we see earthquakes. And hurricanes. Tsunamis. All these things, subhanAllah, by Allah's might. And by Allah's qadr, by Allah's will. And it's supposed to be a wake-up call for all of us. It's supposed to wake us up. And not take anything for granted that Allah Azza wa Jal has given us. Huwa qadilu ala kulli shay. He is capable and powerful over everything. And He is capable of all things. Everything can be taken away in the blink of an eye. And we saw that from the pandemic to the wars, to the hurricanes and the earthquakes and this and that. Happiness one day, living on the high life, living on, on cloud nine. And then all of a sudden, you wake up and a different reality has now faced you. And there was no preparation for it. My brothers and sisters in Islam, we are incapable. Allah is the one who is capable. And never forget that. Allah can create everything and can do everything without any fatigue or need for rest. No food, no drink, no slumber, no sleep. But we need all of those things to even do something. And yet still, out of all this, now we see skyscrapers and airplanes and all of these things. And we still can't bring in a fly from nothing. That annoying little thing that flies around food and around your head and it annoys you and you swat it. You still can't, we still can't create that little fly. Allah says, Ya ayyuhal nas, duriba mathalun fastami'u lah. Inna al-nadina tad'oona min dunillahi lan yakhluku dhubaban walau ishtami'u lahum. Wa in yaslubhum adhubaba shay'an la yastanqiduhu min. Da'u fal talibu wal maqlub. Allah says what means... O mankind, a similitude has been coined to you, so listen to it carefully. Verily, those upon whom you call besides Allah, the ones you're turning to for help and aid and strength and support and comfort besides Allah Azza wa Jal, they cannot even create a fly, even though they were to all combine for the purpose. All the smart people, all the educated people, all the money, all the power, and they still cannot come together to create this little insignificant thing. And if they... The fly snatched away a thing from them. They would have no power to release it from the fly. So weak are both the seeker and the sought. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, what Allah asks of us is not major. We were asked to pray 50 times in the day. And Allah, by His mercy, by His generosity, He he reduced it to 5 times in the day with the reward of 50. For us to give zakat and man on our wealth, to purify it, to show that we understand that it's all a trust from Allah, and Allah, to Him it all belongs. To pay some zakat and mad upon it, if we have it. If you aren't living month to month, but if you are in tight times and you don't have the wealth, then you don't pay it and there's no obligation upon it. To fast the month of Ramadan, only if you're able to do so, if you're capable, if you're really old in age, if it would make you really sick and there's no hope for recovering from your sickness, the pregnant one, the nursing one, if they fear for themselves or their babies, they're excused from fasting and they feed a person a half of a saw for each day they don't fast. This is for the one who cannot make it up. To make hajj one time if your lifetime, again, if you can do so physically, if you have the money to afford it. Look at all these things Allah He gave us. And He made simple for us, simple tasks with excuses upon excuses if they're legitimate. Yet we forget that we are the ones who need Him. We call, only call upon Him when we're afraid, when we're in need, when we got some bad news, when we're upon tough times. This is when we think we know Allah and we turn to Allah. And then when there's ease and happiness and prosperity and the money and the food and the this and the that, Allah is a second thought, maybe a third thought, maybe a fourth or a fifth thought, maybe a tenth thought, if a thought at all to some people. 
And this is what we have entered upon. This is the thing that we come to. And Allah he reflects upon this in the Quran in many ayat. In many ayat. Right? Where he says, وَإِذَا مَسَّكُمُ الدُّرُّ فِي الْبَحْرِ ضَلَّ مَنْ تَدْعُونَ إِلَّا إِيَّاهِ فَلَمَّ نَجَّاكُمْ إِلَى الْبَرِّ أَعْرَدْتُمْ وَكَانَ الْإِنسَانُ كَفُورًا Allah says, what means that when harm touches you upon the sea, those that you call upon besides Allah, those that you seek to help you on this earth to fulfill your desires and your lust, what you're chasing, all of these things, they vanish except for Him, Allah alone. But when He brings you safely to man, you turn away from Him. And mankind is ever ungrateful. And this is how we see us living. Only calling upon Allah when we think that we have some tough times. We have some difficult roads ahead. And other than that, when times are simple and easy, we forget Allah. And He'll drop things in the world as an occurrence, as a reminder, from death to many other things, to wake us up. And we're still heedless. Allah said, هُوَ الَّذِي يُسَيِّرُكُمْ فِي الْبَرِّ وَالْبَحْرِ حَتَّى إِذَا كُنْتُمْ فِي الْفُلْكِ وَجَرَيْنَا بِهِمْ بِرِيحٍ طَيِّبَةٍ وَفَرِحُوا بِهَا جَاءَتْهَا رِيحٌ عَاصِفٌ وَجَاءَهُمْ الْمَوْجُ مِنْ كُلِّ مَكَانٍ وَظَنُّوا أَنَّهُمْ أُحِيطَ بِهِمْ دَعُوا اللَّهَ مُخْلِسِينَ لَهُ الدِّينِ لَإِنْ أَنْجَيْنَا لَإِنْ أَنْجَيْنَا مِنْ هَذِهِ لَنَكُونَنَّ مِنْ مِنَ الشَّاكِرِينَ Allah says what means He it is who, is who enables you to travel through the land and the sea till when you're on the ships and they sail with them with a favorable wind. Allah guiding you and allowing you through that ocean to get to where you need to go. And they are glad they're in. Then a stormy wind comes and the waves come to them from all sides. And they encircle them and they think that they are encircled. At this time they invoke Allah and they call upon Allah making their faith pure for Him alone, saying, if you deliver us, O Allah, from this harm, we will truly be of those who are grateful. And this was the mushrikeen. Even the mushrikeen in these times, as we've been going over on our Sunday halaqat, in the qawa'ad al-arba'ah, the four rules of, regarding shirk, the mushrikeen at the time of the Prophet ﷺ, they believed Allah was the Lord of the heavens and the earth. They believed in this, but... During times of ease, they would go to their intermediaries in this, these aspects of shirk. Times of hardship, they would only call upon Allah. Do you want to be like the mushrikeen who only remember Allah when in times of distress, times of grief, times of sorrow, times of hardship? Allah says what means, but when He delivered them, behold, when they're saved and they're brought to that time of ease again, they rebel, they disobey Allah in the earth wrongfully. O oh mankind, your rebellion, your disobedience to Allah is only against your own selves. When you rebel and you disobey Allah, this is only hurting you. A brief enjoyment of this worldly life, then in the end, unto us is your return, and we shall inform you of what you used to do. Allah says, أَفَرَأَيْتَ مَنْ اتَّخَذَ إِلَهُمُ هَوَاهُ وَأَضَلَّهُ اللَّهُ عَلَى عِلْمُ وَخَتَمَ عَلَى سَمْعِهِ وَقَلْبِهِ وَجَعَلَ عَلَى بَصَرِهِ غِشَاوَهُ فَمَنْ يَهْدِيهِ مِنْ بَعْدِ اللَّهِ أَفَلَا تَذَكَّرُونَ Allah says what means, have you seen him who takes his own lust, his own vain desires as his ilah? as his God, following them head first into whatever his desires call him to. And Allah knowing him as such, he left him astray, he sealed his hearing and his heart, he put a cover over his sight, who will then guide him after Allah, has blocked him from that guidance, will you then not remember? My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Allah Azza wa did not create us, عفوا, He created us only to worship Him. Allah did not create jinn or mankind except to worship Him. But He didn't ask us that everything has to be ibadah. Everything has to be live in the masjid, only pray, don't do anything else in your life. No, He didn't say this. He did not ask for this, but He did ask for us to balance the dunya and the akhirah, seeking them, and only asking for good in both of them. 
And then in the hadith of Hanbala, we saw this. Sa'a wa sa'a. Sa'a wa sa'a. Give time for your worldly affairs, but give time to Allah Azza wa Jal. أقول فلهذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم الله يغفر لكم ذنوبكم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونصلي ونسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا وبعد my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Ramadan is approaching and we have a lot to prepare individually and as a community and as an ummah. We can work for our dunya as long as it's balanced with working for Allah. We give a lot of excuses to not do something that will benefit our brothers and sisters in Islam, benefit the ummah, benefit ourselves and our families from giving in charity to doing good deeds as a whole. So we must wake up to this call. And Bishop bin al-Harith قال لا تجد حلاوة العبادة حتى تجعل بينك وبين الشهوات سدا. Bishop bin al-Harith رحمه الله he said you will not attain the sweetness of worship until you put a barrier between yourself and your desires. Until you put a, a barrier between yourself and your desires, you will not really taste the beauty and the peace and the happiness, inner and outer, that ibadah, worship, will give you. وعن الشعبي رحمه الله قال ما ترك أحد في الدنيا شيئا لله إلا أعطاه الله في الآخرة ما هو خير له. Imam الشعبي he, rahimahullah, may Allah have mercy on him, he said, no one abandons something in this dunya for the sake of Allah, except that Allah will grant them that which is better in the hereafter. And maybe even better in this dunya. When you leave something for the sake of Allah, Allah will give you what is better. So sacrifice those things and start to prepare to get rid of those things that distract you. Put time, energy, wealth, everything you can into your akhirah. Even if it means along the way you're also enjoying your, this dunya with what is halal. But let us remember this situation. Abu Barz al-Aslami, he narrated that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, said, لا تزول قدم, قدم عبد يوم القيامة حتى يسأل عن خمس عن عمره فيما أفناه وعن علمه فيما فعل وعن ماله من أين اكتسبه وفيما أنفقه وعن جسمه فيما أبلاه رواه الترمذي وهذا حديث صحيح The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said in the authentic hadith the feet of the slave of the son of Adam will not move on the day of judgment the feet of the slave of the son of Adam will not move on the day of judgment until he's asked about five things about his life what did he do with it you think you can get to live a life pursuing desire and sin and disobedience to Allah, and you're not going to be asked. You think you're going to pursue a life of doing good for Allah, and He's not going to reward you for it? <laughs> Will Allah reward goodness with anything other than more goodness for you? <laughs> to those who do good, Allah will give al husna jannah wa ziyada. The opportunity to look at the face of Allah Azza wa Jalla in jannah. You will be asked about your life and how you spent it. You will ask about your knowledge and what you did with it. Somewhere along this way will be if you had the opportunity to get authentic knowledge and you chose not to. You chose to go to a person who knew would tell you, would tell you what you wanted to hear, not what was really what was really founded in the Quran and the Sunnah. Or you didn't get knowledge so that you could still be leading the life you wanted to lead and not feel as bad or as guilty about it. You will be asked about the knowledge you have, the knowledge you've been given, the knowledge you heard, and what you did with it. You'll be asked about your wealth. Two questions. How did you earn that wealth? From halal or from haram? Did you earn it in a halal way, working hard, struggling? 
only selling the halal, dealing with the halal, being honest to the people even if it means you got ripped off or someone went and took their business somewhere else? Or did you do it by cheating and lying, stealing, selling what is haram, dealing with riba, and the likes of those things that make those aspects of wealth haram? You'll be asked, how did you earn it and how did you spend it? Now you got the money, how did you spend it? Were you tight-fisted or did you spend in the way of Allah? Did you spend on your parents who it's obligatory for you to spend upon? Or did you tell them no, but then you sought your wealth to pursue your desires in this life, to do things you wanted, to get what you wanted? What did you do with the wealth you were given? Did you engage in more haram because you had that wealth? Did you use it to fulfill haram desires? Or did you use it to better yourself? Make yourself stronger. Help those in need. You'll be asked about these. And lastly, you will be asked about your body and what you did to wear it out. You'll be asked about the body Allah gave you. The ones who had sight, what did you do while you had sight? Who had hearing, what did you do when you had hearing? The one who had legs that could walk and move them, what did you do with those legs? The one who had arms, both of them or one of them, what did you do with those arms? The one who had mobility, muscles, did not have disease or sickness till a certain point of life. And even the ones who are sick, who are capable, what did you do with your body? What did you do with your body? How did you wear it out? How did you get it tired? Was it again fulfilling your desires? Was it pursuing just this dunya? Or did you do anything to wear it out so that Allah will be pleased with you, forgive you, have mercy on you, and tell you what's put it in? Question yourselves with these things. So there comes a point where you have to say enough is enough. Enough being lazy. We all complain about the little things Allah commands us to do. How much time we don't got for ourselves or this dunya. Yet the reality is clear. Where is the time for Allah? He didn't even ask for all of it. He didn't ask us to give all the time to Him. But where is the time, the equal hours to the time that we waste chasing our desires and our false dreams or entertainment or whatever else it may be. Yes, give time for yourself. Give time for your body. Give time for your families, your spouses, your kids. But also give time for Allah Azza wa Give time to the Qur'an. Give time to the afkar of the morning and the evening. Give time to making dua to Allah. Give time to the Qur'an. Give time to seeking ilm, to seeking knowledge. Give time to learning the sunnah of the best of mankind, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Give time to the masjid and helping the masjid. Give time to those who are in need from your brothers and sisters in Islam, your neighbors, those who Allah gave rights over you. Give time to da'wah, because the excuses we're giving are old and pathetic. The Prophet ﷺ said, Sa'a wa sa'a. He said, time for your worldly affairs, time for your deen. For, for Allah, to, to worship Allah, to praise Allah, to glorify Allah. He didn't say all of it for your dunya. And whatever you have left over, give to Allah. So my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, take care of that. Give time to your ibadah, especially Amul al-Islam, salah. Give time to that pillar of Islam, the prayer. And I'll leave you with the statement of Ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah, who said, life of the body without life of the heart is the same life as the animals. The life of one's body with the heart being dead, this doesn't mean that it stops pumping. Because we have many people who are living, breathing, walking, talking, striking, etc. But their hearts are as dead as dead. Life of the body without life of the heart is the same type of life as the animals. They have hearing and seeing, they eat and drink and they reproduce. But what is the life of the heart to give life to the body? It's the love for Allah Azza wa It's the love for Islam. It's the love for His Messenger to Allah and His Sunnah. Learning it so you could do everything he did, say everything he said, be in as much of a way as possible, be like him. Love for the Quran, the book, the words, the speech of Allah, love for the Sunnah of the Prophet, love for the dhikr, love for dua, and the list goes on and on. This is the love of the heart that will give the body life. May Allah make us from those who give time for this dunya but gives time. For Allah to earn His pleasure and His mercy to be admitted into Jannah. Allah makhfir al Muslimin wa Muslimat, al Mu'minin wa al Mu'minat, al Ahyaa'in wa al Amwaat. Inna ka anta sami'a al Qalbun mujib al Da'wat. Ya Muqallib al Qulub, sabit Qulubna ala Dinik. 
يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين وانصرنا على أعدائك وعداء الدين يا أرحم الراحمين سبحان ربك رب العزة يوم يسفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين